So basically, if you want to upregulate your acetylcholine levels, just eat a little bit better, bro. And otherwise supplement with choline, which is the dietary precursor to acetylcholine. Okay, what can we do to optimize acetylcholine levels in the central nervous system and in the brain? You can follow a good diet and have a healthy gut microbiome. Um, so follow an elimination diet that uh, focuses on freshly cooked foods that are easy to digest and provide a broad load of various macro and micronutrients and containing a good amount of choline. So choline-rich foods include egg yolks, whole eggs, beef liver, chicken liver, turkey liver, right? So whole eggs and liver is basically the way to go. Salmon, cod, tilapia, lean beef, lean pork, chicken breast, turkey breast, milk, yogurt, shrimp, other shellfish, peanuts, almonds, sunflower seeds, tofu, and soybeans, including Brussels sprouts, broccoli, and quinoa. So basically, if you want to upregulate your acetylcholine levels, just eat a little bit better, bro. And otherwise supplement with choline, which is the dietary precursor to acetylcholine, right? So um, we already went over the choline-rich foods, but you can supplement with choline, let's say 500 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams upon waking and before bed, 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams um, supplemental choline alongside of the dietary choline that you get. And most diets, if you you know follow a general bro food diet with food that you prepare yourself, right? all the, uh, the lean protein sources and all of the healthy vegetables and nuts and seeds and, um, you know, maybe some, uh, some dairy products here and there, or particularly yogurts, which is still good for digestion. And milk cheese might give you some pimples. So I would omit those, even though there are good sources for choline. So if your diet is balanced from all of the diets that are written over the couple of years where I actually track dietary choline intake, most people in the fitness industry would get approximately 1,000, 2,000, maybe even 3,000 milligrams of choline in per day simply from dietary sources. So if you supplement 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams choline from supplementation, that's, let's say, anywhere between 3,000 to 5,000 milligrams of choline per day. Now, you're still uh, solely dependent on this enzyme, the choline acetyltransferase, to produce acetylcholine from the dietary choline that you're getting in. Um, so... We have uh, highly bioavailable sources for acetylcholine in this uh, acetylcholine production. We have alpha-GPC, one of my favorites. Alpha-GPC stands for alpha glycerophosphocholine. So there's a choline molecule in there somewhere. Alpha-GPC is the highest bioavailable source of choline, which acts as a precursor, duh, to acetylcholine. And has potential neuroprotective effects because a glycerophosphate contributes to the synthesis of cell membranes. So you get something, uh, a building block for acetylcholine for cognitive enhancement, and then also protect the cell membranes of your brain and the central nervous system. General recommendations uh, are anywhere from 300 milligrams to 1200 milligrams before cognitive tasks, right? So this is besides the dietary choline and the potential choline supplementation, which obviously also helps for liver health. Um, and then I would supplement with alpha-GPC once, two times, maybe even three times daily but preferably towards the lower end because most of the established dosages, which the dosage ranges which are on the screen are for solo administrations, but nobody does anything uh, solo, right? We're trying to optimize all of the neurotransmitters. So I would just uh, do something on the low end of all these recommendations and then uh, combine a multitude of different compounds, which is basically the same as a cookie cutter steroid cycle design, right? You combine a couple of different compounds together to elicit a synergistic effect. I would say that alpha-GPC is better than choline by tartrate or CDB choline, but let's just discuss them anyway. Uh, choline by tartrate has a moderate bioavailability of uh, choline and tartric acid. Of course, uh, this can also raise acetylcholine levels. General recommendations are anywhere between 500 to 1,000 milligrams before cognitive tasks. And then there's CDB choline, which stands for cytidine diphosphate choline. I think there's a brand called Cetocholine out there, which contains CDB choline. Also highly bioavailable, albeit not to the extent uh, of the bioavailability that alpha-GPC has. Of course, CDB choline is also broken down in the intestinal tract to release choline and cytidine. Uh, choline is used as an acetylcholine precursor right, for synthesis, and cytidine is converted into uridine, which is another nucleotide involved in brain function. I know what you're going to ask, Steve, what about uridine monophosphate? Don't worry, we'll get to that. So you might have an overlapping effect if you go with CD, CDP choline instead of alpha-GPC and you uh, combine that or don't combine that with uridine 5-monophosphate. And CDP choline also has potential neuroprotective effects 
general recommendations are a little bit higher than alpha GPC towards the lower end. I would say that a good effect is established from 500 milligrams to 1000 milligrams before cognitive tasks and up to three times daily. Keep in mind that alpha GPC, choline, uh, bitartrate and CDB choline can all contribute to headaches and gastrointestinal discomfort and a choline bitartrate specifically can cause a fishy body odor if you overdo it, right? So you have to going to um, right, make a decision, eat healthy first, maybe supplement with a little bit of uh, di uh, choline on top of your diet. And then towards the lower end of alpha GPC, I would start supplementing with once, maybe two times per day. That's a good start. You can always take more later on. Again, my favorite is alpha GPC. I would um, prefer that one over choline by tartrate or CDB choline, but there's something to say for CDB choline because it, it contains uridine, albeit that you can just supplement with uridine 5 monophosphate, which again is a nucleotide that plays a crucial role in the synthesis of ribonucleic acid, RNA, and phospholipids in the brain. So it makes logical sense that if you take anabolic androgenic steroids, which has a lot of androgen-mediated gene transcription, RNA turnover, and protein expression, that you provide a crucial building block in the synthesis of RNA when a syn RNA synthesis is upregulated. So you get a lot of protein expression, but of course all of the neurological effects which are associated with RNA expression are upregulated and sustained as well. Now, besides contributing to acetylcholine synthesis in the brain, uh, uridine 5-monophosphate might also enhance dopamine secretion and indirectly influence serotonin levels and serotonin transmission, potentially contributing to mood regulation. Personally, I would say that uridine 5-monophosphate, besides L-theanine and alpha-GPC, are some of the key ingredients in this stack. You will definitely notice a huge boost in overall cognitive function, motivation, and mood, with a simple low dose of 200 to 400 milligrams uridine 5-monophosphate before cognitive task, maybe once or two times per day. I would say that 300 milligrams is certainly my favorite, but again, if you want to start low because you're going to combine a multitude of these different over-the-counter supplements, again, you can always build your way up. A side effect of uridine monophosphate, though, is insomnia, allergic reactions, and gastrointestinal discomfort if you overdo it. So if you go to um, 1,200 milligrams per day right off the start, um, some side effects are uh, to be expected. Now, again, these are just building blocks for acetylcholine, but acetylcholine still has to be formed besides the enzymatic reaction coming from acetyl, uh, what is it? Choline acetyltransferase, uh, vitamin B6, vitamin B9, and vitamin B12, iron, and magnesium to a certain extent, all contribute to the synthesis of acetylcholine. Again, I mentioned this already in several earlier parts regarding neurotransmitter synthesis, so I don't want to go over it too much in depth, right? I'll put all of the details on the screen. Vitamin B5 pentatonic acid is uh, important. I included all of the dietary sources. I would just stick with a general vitamin B50 complex, morning and evening, or a B100 complex if you prefer. 